So objects are nothing but the runtime representation of their class. So when the class is actually run up, so they are the runtime representation. And the objects hold the state with the variables. So they hold the actually states of the uh, of the attributes of the variables. So object do some work with this these various methods here. String is case sensitive. Uh, Neha has asked me a question here. What exactly do you mean, want to ask here, Neha? Uh, can you just quickly write it up? Uh, because in Java, the string S has to be in caps. So this is uh, how it works in Java. If I have to declare a string object, it is always this S in the caps that I use in Java. And I think I'll let Neha write up, and then we'll be starting again. Neha, we are waiting for you to write up uh, the question and then we'll be starting up again with the session. All right, so Neha says, what is the difference between string and string? Uh, that is S with a capital and S with a small. So Neha, in, string, uh, in Java what we have, if we have to use the string class, the string class is the one that is having the first letter as the capital, that is string, all right? And there is nothing in Java which says which starts with small s. You can have a naming, uh, you can have the names of the variables with small s, but if I talk about string, it always starts with a capital S, Neha. All right, so I was telling you about the Java objects here. So can be created during the runtime, and here it is, it is the way how the Java objects can be created, or the Java class objects can be created. I have the class name, I have the object name and I do a new operator and it will actually create a new object for me. All right. I hope this is clear to you Neha. Then we have the various methods. So a method is a named sequence of code that can, that can be invoked by other Java code. Very much like a, a function that we have. All right. A method takes some parameters, performs some com computations onto those parameters and it can optionally return a value. So you can always have a return type with the method. So it, here is an example of a return type here which says public float. This is the return type and I have the name of the method which says convert to Celsius and I'm passing in a parameter to the method here which is the temp variable and what I'm doing is I'm returning a float variable. Very simple here. Then we have the various modifiers here. So when I talk about the modifiers if I have a class as a public modifier, so any method in any class can access this field. So this is what the public modifier does. It gives access to everyone. Then we have the protected modifiers. So when I talk about the protected modifiers, it's like any method in the same package or if I'm having ex inheritance, I'm extending a class, all right? Then I can have this particular uh, variables accessible. Then we have the private modifiers. So only methods within the class can access this field. Only the ones that are within the class are actually accessing this these methods here. Then we have the default modifier. It is nothing but without any modifier. So all the method, all the classes in the same package can access this. So this is all that we have for the Java review here. Any person having any questions with the topics that we have covered in today's session, they can write it onto the chat window. I've kept up a 15 minute slot for everyone. If they have any questions, any queries here, you can quickly write it onto the chat window. 